Greetings everyone, this is Rock and Roll Spot Connection. Today we'll be, well, tonight, we'll be covering the la this past month's worth of uh, Dark Knight's death metal tie-ins. Starting off with, well, death Dark Knight's death metal number four. Um, oof. Basically, our heroes had uh, split up. The Lanterns were leading an assault on, upon uh, the uh, the antennae throughout the multiverse. The Flashes were uh, trying to outrun the, the Darkest Knight and the uh, Speed Force and get the Mobius chair. While the Trinity had gone to the Dark Multiverse to uh, siphon crisis energy from Crisis on Infinite Earth's Earth, uh, Infinite Crisis Earth, and Final Crisis Earth. Only to discover that things had gone very differently. On the Crisis on Infinite Earth's Earth, Batman is being tortured by a childlike anti-monitor Um, Batman's trying to get through to Wonder Woman uh, through the Alfred box, explaining, you know, turn back, that the worlds are all wrong. They're not the crises that, as they know, knew them. They're dark versions, or basic versions where the heroes lost. <laughs> On Final Crisis Earth, Superman is, be is detained by a handful of alternate supermen under the thrall of uh, Dark Side, Master of Anti Life. And on the Infinite Crisis Earth, Superboy Prime has uh, imprisoned Wonder Woman in the uh, antenna. And he explains that this Earth is now a dream of, of what was and what should have been and how things will be again. And he explains that uh, now he tells her, listen, listen to this world as he listens to Wonder Woman's. But, uh... On this Earth, however, they have heroes whose goodness inspires the people and who inspire the people to keep evil at bay and this is vanquished. Eventually, flashes continue running from the dark, the darkest night. The Robin King is fighting the Trinity's uh, backup and is slowly killing. Uh, Hex. Which, which makes Harley mad to no, to no end. And, but uh, Hex tries to tell her to... Uh, he tells her, you know, hey, look, run. I, I've got the, everything, everything he's doing to me, I got coming. You don't. And yeah, he does. He does manage to get her, but uh, Robin King brings up an interesting thing. Apparently, he has a, he has a theory on account of the fact that the 
as he puts it, the one who laughs showed him a lot of the dark multiverse. Now, fear, heroes' fears take the form of evil versions of themselves. By contrast, villains' fears take the form of good versions of themselves. And so, he asked, you know, you know, what is, you know, ever wonder what, why you never see a Harley who laughs? His theory is that she's even more evil than Joker. However, he gets cut off when Swamp Thing collapses uh, things around him, and the trio and the surviving trio of uh, Swamp Thing, Jaro, and Harley manage to escape. Back on the Infinite Crisis Earth, um, on, the, on the Crisis Earths, the Trinity's kind of being tortured by Prime, the Anti Monitor, and uh, Dark Side. However, on the Infinite Crisis Earth, Wonder Woman is able to get through. To prime. But, you know, and he basically, you know, she basically explains, you know, it's kind of just a shot in the dark to begin with. And he... Prime realizes she's right. And so, Prime shatters the uh, antennae and saves the remaining members of the Trinity. And uh, they arrive back on Earth-1. But, all, all the price energy has gone to the Moby's chair, but something's wrong. And the, the Darkest Night arrives and explains exactly what happened. All that crisis energy, instead of being redirected to the Mobius chair, got redirected to him. And he's going to, so he's going to remake the multiverse in his own image. As he welcomes them to the last 52. Next up, we've got our, our one shots. We got Death Metal, the Robin King. Um, it, now we've already heard of the Robin King's origin, thanks uh, through Legends of the Dark Knights. Um, this actually does kind of contradict these a little bit, as it's fairly clear in Legends of the Dark Knights that the Robin King killed Gordon early on, but Gordon gets name dropped as still being on. Uh, Robin King's case, so, yeah. But, whereas a young Bruce Wayne encountered bats at, on the grounds of Wayne Manor, normally, in the Robin King's home reality, at the funeral of his parents, the Robin that he saw, and that kind of inspired, that was an inspiration to him. And we get a look at his utility belt, uh, the various things on it. You got a bottled imp, The last remaining Lazarus pit of water, Hephaestus's bind of veils, some Smilex, nth metal cuffs with no key, um, three different rings, a small a ring made of every shade of kryptonite, um, another called the God Thriller, charged with Zeus's deity killing lightning, and the ring pop forged from the gun that he used to kill the Waynes for sentimental, sentimental value. We've got uh, Ragman's Soul Rags, Unholy Water, Holy Water, Lobo's Unbreakable Hook. But yeah, on uh, the Robin King's Earth, he took down all the heroes, and we see some of that. Then he goes after, he goes after, in the present, he comes after the, our, the Trinity. But... 
He, uh, looking at his past, he took down Firestorm by jamming a black hole infu inversion ball into him, which basically sucked him into himself. Um, he killed a couple of pilot vigilantes with you know, one with a gun, one with the guns from the uh, Otis plane. Um, he backwards engineered, he reverse engineered the uh, Zeta beam to uh, materialize Adam Strange into a wall. Uh, if I remember correctly, I must have skipped over this. But he he impales a, the Hawks with uh, a lightning rod and that's been dusted with everything from, from kryptonite to nth metal. And around this time is when he first encounters the Batman who laughs. In the present, he's beating the hell out of the Trinity still and telling them all about the stuff he's done. Uh, however, Blue Beetle, Animal Man, and uh, Red Tornado come to stop him. And he promptly takes all of them down. Um, but... He gets, around, he gets taken to uh, the home Earth of the Batman Who Laughs and sees all the crows. And he gets put into the crow... Uh, he gets turned into a crow. But first, he takes a pill. Something that he uh, had saved up for the Martian. Traps and preserves a small part of the mine inside one's burning body. And he comes out as a crow. And then he gets to uh, once Batman who last became the Darkest Knight, the Robin King was set free again. Not because Batman who last believes in the Robin King, but as a distraction. With the Robin, with Robin King kind of seeing the Batman who laughs as being no different from his parents, or the caregiver with their grave, or the heroes. But he figures somewhere out there, young eyes are watching. He continues his fight. He puts on his uh, three rings and goes after. And oh yeah, he trounces the Trinity. However, the one who, the, the Darkest Knight grabs him, and uh, they talk a bit in the Dark Multiverse. Apparently, the pill that, that uh, Robin King took uh, infused the Robin Pit, so every, every Goblin made after, after did a tiny amount of free will. And apparently, the Darkest Knight's been letting them watch uh, the Robin King from his Earth prove him wrong, that they would still crow for him. However, when he returned to see, they were all cheering. And then the one who laughs explains that they broke their chains and await the one and only Robin King. We get a backup story where in uh, a handful of uh, the Bat family, uh, Signal, I think Tim Drake, and uh, Orphan, are taking on uh, oh, Quietus. Quietus is a com is a combination of uh, Batman, Ra's al Ghul, and a uh, Lazarus Pit and the Signal. We it's explained. But uh, the combined forces of the three uh, members of the Bat Family take down Quietus and get to continue on with uh, Spoiler eventually, with Spoiler joining them. 
Which brings us to Rise of the New God. Um, things are not looking good. Darkest Night has a uh, chat with Perpetua, basically saying, I hated serving you, and I cannot wait to kill you. They duke it out through the multiverse as the Chronicler comes to chronicle the end of this multiverse. Looking for various people along the way, starting off with Psycho Pirate, getting, gaining his knowledge uh, of this multiverse. Psycho Pirate tries to manipulate the Chronicler, but, well, he doesn't really do emotions, so yeah, no. Next, he get he goes to uh, Vril Docks to get the uh, knowledge of Brainiac and add it to his own to the uh, Codex Multiversa. Um, Docks tries to uh, imprison the Chronicler and leave this multiverse for another one, but well. <sighs> But it backfires on him. On the moon, Chronicler resurrects Metron, also asks what happened. Metron, now free from his chair, explains his existence and how he knew it was happening, but... Uh, and he was supposed to be as impartial observer, but he would all he, he was supposed to observe and never, you know, never interfere, kind of. But and he he would and lie to himself that it was all in pursuit of knowledge. And you see, he now separated from Moby Strait, he's differently. And this actually sparks something of a reaction from the Chronicler and. Uh, But gaining all, he then gains Metron's knowledge, and decides that yes, he, you know, Chronicler decides he's going to help. He now believes in this universe, and he's going to do what he can to save it. We have a backup story featuring the lanterns on the carrier and the bleed. Things are not going well, so they got to figure out what they're going to do now. Most of them seem seem on board with John with John Stewart's plan. Guy's a little hesitant. With uh, John basically saying, you know, he thinks what's going on is that Guy is scared. He's the weak link in the plan. So he asks if Guy's the weak link. And Guy, being, well, Guy Gardner, says, never your life. So lead the way. And they're told to focus and see the result. Hal pilots the carrier through uh, the bleed. They come out over Earth. Right in front of the Darkest Night. And it appears at the end that uh, the passengers have been gathered together with John and the other lanterns op opting to uh, deputize all of them. And that is where the issue ends. Which brings us to Justice League issues 54 and 55, covering the Justice League tie-in, issue 54. Um, 54 begins with uh, Cyborg and Starfire appearing on Earth, being attacked by, in the Arkham Wasteland, in the Arkham Waste. By mutated versions of what appear to be bad villains. When uh, Detective Chimp, Nightwing, and uh, Hawk Girl, as well as Lex Luthor, intervene and help to try and save the day. 
However, because Starfire and Cyborg and Nightwing and Detective Chimp and Hawkgirl are, you know, smart, they don't trust Lex. But it's explained that uh, Marshall Manor went to go over, uh, save the Legion of Doom from the antenna there, or the throne, the Perpetua's throne, which they are imprisoned in. However, he's come upon, upon one, of the, one of the Dark Knights, Mind Hunter, a combination of Batman and Marshall Manhunter. And we see a bit of their fight, which is both physical and psychic. As our heroes continue on and they come they come to the valley of a valley full of starrows. They begin to make their way through and they start seeing things. Starfire suddenly goes back to her classic look and then is back to her current look. And then Nightwing Wakes up in the Batcave. Alfred and Batgirl waiting on him. Right after he was shot by KG Beast. Alfred explains it was, that it's merely a flesh wound. He, but, you know, Master Richard does have a concussion, and he's very lucky the bullet missed. Batman is taking KG Beast to Blackgate at the moment, and, you know, everyone's scared, and Nightwing wraps his arms around Alfred. Suddenly, though, he's in his New 52 costume. Then he's dressed as Batman. Then he's in one of his older Nightwing costumes. Then he's in his first Nightwing costume. Then he's back to being Robin. When Batman arrives, we then see what everyone else is seeing. But uh, Dick realizes that things aren't real. This is this. This isn't what's what he's seeing isn't real. Um, Starfire is reunited with her sister. Uh, Marshman and Hawkgirl are reunited. Cyborg and his father are reunited. And uh, Detective Chimp is reunited with uh, Nightmaster. But. Uh, Lex saves Nightwing, and, uh... Well, it kind of seems as though... But, so far, only Nightwing. The rest are still under Star Wars Thrall, and so now it's... Nightwing and Lex Luthor versus... De 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 Detective Chimp, Cyborg, Starfire, and Hawkgirl. Which brings us, of course, to Justice League number Justice League number fifty-five, uh, which begins as the fight between uh, Mind Hunter and Martian Manhunter continues. Mind Hunter is kind of winning. Meanwhile, the battle rages on between uh, star manipulated League members and Nightwing and Lex. And it takes some time. It, for one thing, Lex figured out how it is that everyone's being affected by Starro. Spores, basically. Or spore sized starros. So, and uh, Lex is able to uh, clear everyone's head with the, utilizing uh, Cyborg's tech. And they pick up Detective Chimp. And we're on to the day where they, they, apparently Lex has a boat waiting. A boat made from the remnants of the friggin' Metal Men. So, 
our heroes climb aboard. Zedro Chimp is actually rather pissed and kind of wishes that uh, everyone just kind of left, let him be. You know, and how can anyone really tell the difference between the nightmare they just went through and Starro made them see it and the current nightmare they're in? He explains that in there, his only friend, the only friend he ever had was still alive. And uh, Cyborg Crypt say, hey, you, have, you know, you got friends, but Chimp's just like, I don't want other friends, all right? And he explains that he's seen too many friends killed, imprisoned, or hurt, and he's done making friends. And they're so desperate that they, they play team up with Lex Luthor to save the Legion of Doom. And what kind of heroes are they? They're too stupid to see that their old lives are gone, the others act against them, and they're not coming back from it. From it. They're done. And they're not the Justice League, they're the Suicide Squad. And Starfire punctuates it by saying that it will be a good death. And this is their last time together, they'll go down, she will go down fighting. So they continue on toward uh, their destination and Jean's rep mental rapport with uh, Hawk Girl hits her she flies off to try and get him try to save him and first Dick's first thought we need to we need to you know bring her back but Lex explains no 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 She's doing what she needs to do. And being a hero always comes with costs. However, it wasn't Jean she heard in her head. It was Mindhunter who accessed that part of Jean's mind and brought her to him. Meanwhile, the rest of the Lee, the rest of our uh, heroes and, well, Lex, are faced with the Omega Knight. We already knows they're there. Because Mindhunter told them. Which he explains to uh, Hawk Girl just before uh, the Omega Knight seems to blast the, the heroes all at once. With the exception of Hawk Girl, who's with uh, Mindhunter. Which is where the issue ends. And that's it for now. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and PayPal can be found in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off saying, live long and rock hard.